All right, buenos dias. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. We'll be talking today about a re regarding a beautiful city in the country of, uh, of Ecuador. It's the city of Guayaquil. You'll become an expert afterwards, and we'll be talking more on the details of this fantastic uh, city, the largest city of Ecuador, in fact. Um, previously, we've talked about other uh, locations of our country. We've talked about the city of Quito already the capital of the country. Now it's time to talk about the largest city of our country, a city right by the coast, right at sea level, the fantastic city of Guayaquil. We'll be starting the webinar shortly. We're just waiting until others uh, join us uh, this morning, and we thank you for your presence uh, with us today. Remember that this is a series of webinars. Later on, we'll have a, uh, a webinar on the city of Cuenca and other regions of Ecuador, and today, again, we'll be talking about the fantastic city of Guayaquil. Now we know where the country is located. We know the country of Ecuador is in South America. We know we are right at latitude 000. And there you can see on the screen the relationship between our country and the geography of the, of the region. We are surrounded to the north by beautiful countries such as Colombia and south of us the amazing country of Peru. And there in the middle of uh, latitude 000 right in the tropics you'll find the beautiful country of Ecuador. That's a geographic location of where we are. And now that we uh, need to talk about where the city of Guayaquil is located, we need to go to the lowlands. We need to go right down to sea level. We've been, of course, up in the highlands. We've talked about Quito on our previous webinar. And you know that the Andes Mountains run right through the middle of the country from north to south. Um, here, uh, Guayaquil is located in the uh, bordering the Pacific Ocean right at sea level. There you can see in the image where the city is located or the geographic region of where uh, Guayaquil is located. Keep in mind that Guayaquil is the largest city of, uh, of Ecuador. It has an international airport, therefore it should be always considered a, um, a gateway to the rest of Ecuador. Not only the city of Quito has an airport, but the city of Guayaquil as well. Therefore you can easily connect when you travel within Ecuador or when you're traveling outside of Ecuador and connecting to other destinations nearby. It's located, as we were saying, in the south coast of the Pacific Ocean at the banks of the amazing Guayas River. And why I call it amazing is because all the sediments that are coming from the Andes eventually collect at uh, lower elevations and, and these very large savannas, which make up eventually the delta of the Guayas River, end up way into the Pacific Ocean. And the, um, uh, the, the, the city itself, uh, it, it does the name Guayas River, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's situated right along the river. It's not a city that is right by the ocean. That's a misconception that from time to time people may have when they see a map and they see Guayaquil. They think we are right by the Pacific Ocean. No, we are right at the riverbanks, if you will, of the Guayas River, which eventually, uh, of course, dumps into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Guayaquil is the main port city of the country, no doubt about it. It's one of the most important ports in the, in the whole country of, um, of Ecuador and, of course, definitely in the region of South America. Its population, it's over two and a half million uh, people, and that includes the, uh, the, the, the urban area, the metro area of the city, as well as some of the neighborhoods and small cities nearby. In fact, if you add all the other small cities that nowadays are somewhat connected to Guayaquil because of commerce, we have a city of, um, of bordering the 3 million mark if you add, again, all those other uh, smaller cities uh, within about 30, 40 minutes from Guayaquil. It's a warm climate year-round, and, and remember, we are at sea level, so therefore it's very comfortable uh, temperatures all year round. This is one of those destinations that never gets cold, if you will, because we are right at uh, at sea level and right in the tropics. It's uh, on on average, you know, the lowest temperature you'll ever find in uh, in Guayaquil any time around August, September will be about 23, 24 Celsius, about 73, 75 Fahrenheit. And for the warmest, it can go all the way up to the low mid 30s and and quite humid. And that happens in months like February and March. Humidity is high because remember it's it's part of a riverbed, it's part of a of a river bank, and so it's surrounded by mangroves. Evaporation is very high, and thus humidity remains within that band of 70 to 75 uh, percent. 
the history of Guayaquil is absolutely amazing and, and quite astonishing because in, uh, in, back in time, the Huancavilcas, the, the, the group of aboriginals that were established in this area, dominated the area, incredible sailors. They knew about the ocean, not only in terms of navigation, but also in terms of what the ocean can provide for them. And, um, and it's been uh, mistakenly said that, you know, the Incas were in this region. No, no, no. It's the Huancavilca culture that really developed. Again, incredible sailors knew their waters extremely well and dominated the riverbanks due to the productivity of the ocean. And, of course, the productivity of the, uh, of the delta, which, again, it's, it's fed by all these sediments that we were talking about. Um, now that we touch base on that subject, the delta of the Guayas River is the second largest in the world after the Nile River in, um, in Africa, in, in Egypt. So it's interesting, you know, that here in America, in South America, we've got the second largest delta, the most, second most productive uh, delta of, of all. Now, after that, after the Huancavilcas reigned in, in, in that area, the Spanish colonization of Ecuador came by. And the Spaniards have a lot, had a lot to do, of course, with, uh, with colonizing and, and coming down, if you will, in, to, to the, um, the city of Guayaquil and, of course, uh, developing the, uh, the city in, uh, in many ways. But the Ecuadorians who were in charge of, um, of, the, of the independence and, and, and commanded and said, no, we must liberate ourselves from, uh, from, from Spain, actually had all the early talks about the independence right in here. The, the, li the, the liberty movement, if you will, starting in Guayaquil was very, very powerful. So the, the city itself has a lot of history when it comes to understanding the influence that it had on, the, on, becoming, on, on making the whole uh, region independent. It's been said that Guayaquil was the first a geographic region, if you will, of Ecuador that became independent, and then the rest of Ecuador and, of course, the rest of the nation became fully uh, independent. So, um, do know that the, the city of Guayaquil has a lot of history in, um, in, in that regard. Now, of course, the modern city, as, as time progressed, and we were looking at the riverbank in the previous older picture, now that same location, but in modern time, looks as it is right now. It's the, it, it has been, you know, since the very beginning of the um, history of the Republic of Ecuador has been labeled as the economic engine. It's, it's, it's really the force of commerce that, um, that the country uh, received from the efforts here in, uh, in Guayaquil City. And it is a modern city nowadays. It is a city that is facing very well the, uh, the future. It is a city that embracing beautifully uh, new opportunities for business and definitely development and, and growth. In, uh, in this area, it's quite astonishing. It's incredible what you read and see nowadays about uh, Guayaquil. Now, and I say that because if you read any, um, any, any former literature, any older literature, you know, uh, written perhaps in the late 70s, early 80s about the city of Guayaquil, perhaps not the greatest comments are, are there. Uh, for the for the city, and it's and it's fair enough to say that at that time the city had its issues, particularly with uh, with uh, with safety um, hygiene, even in some locations. But all of that has changed tremendously in the past eight ten years. So do know that when your clients are visiting the city of Guayaquil, they're looking at a modern city, they're looking at a city with infrastructure, they're looking at a city that has an international airport, and they're looking at a city that is facing the future and ready to embrace any challenge whatsoever. Because of that, it's, uh, as we were saying, it's been labeled uh, as the, the, the birthplace of, of liberty, the cradle of liberty, back down in October 9, 1820. It's also been uh, declared as the model of human development and urban regeneration because remember what we said, it was a city that needed renovation. It, it was a city that needed revamp and that came in the past 18 years and has been well recognized by the um, by United, Na United Nations Development Program. It's also received the prize of the best system of sustainable transportation in a developing country. And, and that was given in 2007. And in fact, the, the, um, the city has done incredible efforts at, uh, at understanding how the, how the transportation of these two and a half million people, or a little over than that, have to come about in this commerce area. Because of commerce, people need to move in, uh, in, in the city of Guayaquil. Now, here's a map 
of um, of the geographic location or the geographic bearings, if you will, of the city. Because it's flat, it's sometimes hard to say exactly where north is, where east is. Unlike the city of Quito, that remember uh, last time we were talking about the Pichinchas as the way of looking at where west is. If you look at the mountains of of Quito, the, the Pichincha volcanoes, uh, yes, that is west. Uh, but if here in Guayaquil, it's a, it's a little hard. But of course, if you look at the water, and if you notice that the water is moving in a certain direction, and ships are going out, of course, they're going out. Most of them are going out into the Pacific Ocean. So that'll be uh, that'll be west. But looking at the city, because it's all uh, flat, you need to have your bearings around. The city is on the uh, on the northern. Uh, part of the riverbank of the of the Guayas River. You can see there the airport. You can see where the uh, the main hill is, uh, Cerro del Carmen. We'll see that uh, shortly. And here you see the river itself. The whole city, in fact, is located in right, right along the riverbanks in this area that I'm pointing out right now. And eventually, if you follow this one all the way into that direction, you'll end up right in the Pacific Ocean. Those are your geographic bearings in the city. Of, uh, of Guayaquil. The central part of the city, the, 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 the mix, if you will, of older part of the city and the newer part of the city is in the square that you see uh, right there. And in more detail, you can probably see that um, the, uh, the, the, the design of the city, the urban design is, is rather simple because it's flat, unlike Quito that you know, has hills and, and, and small valleys and, and elevations and it's virtually impossible to have straight streets and straight avenues. In the case of Guayaquil, you can see that that is definitely the, the, the case. It's, it's more evenly done or more geometrically done, if you will. Now, you will see that to the right of the picture, right over here, there is a big, big hill called Cerro del Carmen. This area is the one that is looking north, and that'll be the easiest way to look around. If you look at, the, at that uh, mount or that small hill, that's facing north. Opposite of that will be south and eventually, of course, west out the uh, Pacific Ocean. The main uh, malecon or the main um, uh, river walk is in the square uh, red area that you see right there. The Las Peñas sector and the Cerro Santa Ana in, the, uh, in, in the, the traditional bohemian historic side of the city is located in the green square that you see on, uh, on that one. And then, of course, the central component, the, 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 the hustle and bustle uh, part of the city is in the downtown area, the orange square that you see right there in the picture. If you head up west a little bit, northwest rather, uh, into the Estero, uh, the, the Estero is where the, uh, the, the big swamps of, of mangrove forests mixed together with brackish water, uh, evidence of contact with seawater and evidence of contact with fresh water, they belong to that newer, modern, uh, well beautifully designed, uh, and it's called the Estero Salado, the estuary, if you will, of, um, of Guayaquil. Okay, so let's start in the famous riverfront, the Malecon, the riverfront that faces the uh, the Guayas River. It's a, it's a fantastic area. It's very well designed, very st aesthetically done. It's over two and a half kilometers of public areas, culture, entertainment, restaurants, incredible stuff, and you can see the map uh, right now on the screen of where that goes to. And you can see that it is quite extensive. Remember, it's two and a half kilometers for walking. It's fantastic. The south end of the, um, of, of the, uh, of the riverfront is where we recommend you start and they gradually move into the uh, central zone of the, um, of, the, of the riverfront. Then the gardens come in here with these incredible trees and vegetation, tropical of course, all in, uh, in, in, its, in its nature. And of course to, towards the end of it, the north, is where you'll find the IMAX theater, uh, other modern uh, restaurants, and, uh, and, and great views of course of the river in the city itself. In those four areas, or four sections, is how the, uh, the, the riverfront is divided. Now, the south area is where the Latin American Integration Square is found, the Crystal Palace, which is great for venue, I mean, events uh, as, as a great venue. Uh, it's also where you find a handcrafts market. And then as we progress and move a bit uh, towards the, 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 the more of the center of, the, um, of, the, uh, of this section, you'll find the Moorish Tower, the Pier of Morgan boat, because remember the pirates 
raided this area back in the eight, late 1700s, early 1800s, burned the city down to ashes. The city regained uh, its strength again. So therefore, the names of many pirates are highly associated with the Wyas River and the city of Guayaquil. This is also the area where you find the, 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 the civic square the, uh, the, the, that commemorates the meeting place of famous liberators and famous uh, patriots of, um, of our region in South America. The famous meeting between uh, Antonio José de Sucre and, uh, and Simón Bolívar took place right in here. And uh, it, the, the monument that you see in the picture is the one that commemorates that. Uh, th this region also has this, uh, you know, for kids and, and good design where the gardens and vegetation is found. Um, it's, 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 it's great to see vegetation. I, I think one of the tropical beauties uh, of the area is how lush vegetation can be and how different it can be from most of our clients who are coming from northern uh, latitudes or southern latitudes that have never had much exposure to tropical vegetation. Then as we progress, more art, culture, and sports and entertainment are part of the northern section of the, uh, of the riverfront and along that area is where your clients will have a very uh, great time exploring the, uh, the, the riverfront. Then we arrive to famous Las Peñas. Las Peñas, the Cerro Santa Ana, and the port itself, the Puerto Santa Ana, are fantastic. This is where the blending happens between the older section of town and the newer section of town. And here you can see a map of how that distribution is. It's good effort also to walk all the way to the top of this lighthouse and have a fantastic view of the city and definitely the, uh, the Guayas uh, River. This area, remember, uh, Las Peñas is the one that commemorates the, the older style of living. If you would have been in Guayaquil, say, five, ten years, uh, not, not, not sure, but say, ten, fifteen years ago, that place was the pits. It was completely destroyed, uh, completely in bad shape, and it has been uh, totally renovated. In, 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 um, and because of that, clients love going there, visitors of the city of Guayaquil love going to that uh, location. The, the walk, as we were saying, to the, to the top of the hill, the Santa Ana Hill, it's, um, it's quite interesting. It's, it's good effort, good steps all the way to the top, but again, the greatest view ever that you'll get of the city and the, and the river. And then north of that, the modern section of the port, this is where the new Guayaquil will start developing. It has to already uh, started. But uh, but new things are likely to come in uh, in the future. That is where the where the recent hotel Wyndham has been uh, has been built, and all north of that is where other great buildings have been seen. And we'll see pictures of that in just a minute. Uh, the Las Peñas neighborhood that we were talking about resembles the uh, how the past was of this uh, city and how incredible it is to to explore the, uh, the, the, the cobblestone streets of a warm location. Of course, you can do a little bit of this when you're in Quito or in Cuenca, but remember that here in Guayaquil, it's in the tropics, so the warmth blends very well with the design, the colors. And then as you enter the neighborhood of Las Peñas and start de dealing with the, with the steps, you gradually make your way to the top of the Santa Ana Hill, and from there you can see the beauty of the city, the, 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 the river, and the different shops and bars and, 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 and pubs that you find uh, in the area. It's quite interesting to, uh, to go through all of that. Now, the Santa Ana port that we were talking about, the most modern area, is where the new Wyndham Hotel has been built, now open for about four or five months. And in that area, those of you who are listening from, uh, from Canada, if you've driven through Mississauga, you probably have seen a very similar uh, structure, a very similar building to the twisted a building that you see right there. Well, the same architect who built the one in Mississauga is the one who built this one. So, uh, thus the resemblance. Now, let's head into downtown, and this is where where the action, where the real deal, uh, the daily lives of Guayaquileños uh, happens. And and it's fantastic because, as we were saying, the geometric design of the city, it's um, it's right there for you to enjoy. The uh, the Seminario Park, it's uh, it's the one that you see there in uh, in green. The famous uh, administration plaza with its uh, old, old, older buildings in San Francisco Square. And pretty soon we'll see the Centenario Park and, and, the, and the one that has all the famous iguanas right there, you know, surrounding the daily lives of Guayaquileños and, and visitors alike. This is, for example, the older building resembling the Victorian days, the Republican days of the early days of the city of Guayaquil. This is where the mayor and the governor of the city live. Uh, past that area, as we get into the cathedral, um, 
we'll see the park of the iguanas this is a great location this is a, a place that most visitors and most books about the the, the, the city of Guayaquil talk about and, and, and great contact with you know the locals and of course the iguanas are, are is, is just fantastic and then remember the malecon the the uh, the riverfront and the estero the estuary it's on the modern more modern section of the city that can be easily accessed from downtown and here you see a map if you follow the uh, Arosemena Avenue all the way up uh, you'll eventually uh, reach the estuary this brand new area of very good taste when it comes to uh, tropical design and you know uh, looking at, um, at at great walking areas with mangroves and the beauty and, and the found water fountains and all of that is seen in um, in this region as I said, it's good taste that uh, has been added to visit the estero, the estuaries with the water fountains, the mangroves, the tropical vegetation, even some orchid species can be seen in, in that area. So make sure that when you explore the city of Guayaquil, you also venture in, uh, in that newer, modern section of the, of the city. And again, quite accessible from downtown. Now, when it comes to entertainment, there are over 10 theaters, movies. The IMAX theater is in there. There are a couple of other ones in, in South America, but the first IMAX theater in South America is the one you're looking at. And the city of Guayaquil was chosen for that because of the importance, economically speaking, uh, for the city. In terms of culture, there's a lot of inner culture in this city. Of course, every, every city in, in the country of Ecuador has its own little things. Uh, and probably music is what makes Guayaquil quite different than the uh, than the other uh, important cities of our country. Uh, there's so much music involved and the music scene is so high that there's even a, a museum uh, for music if you will of the of the historical music or the traditional music that you find in 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 this city. You can go there and and, and enjoy the different uh, settings that um, that the city has. So in, in terms of culture, people, clients who visit uh, the, the city of Guayaquil will find a lot of that. When it comes to squares, parks, and public spaces, again, remember, all of these are the ones that have been heavily renovated in the, for the past five, ten years. You will encounter many good examples of, uh, of these. In fact, 23 squares and parks are, are facing the three different riverfronts that uh, the city has and one of them as we were saying is the one that has the iguanas and looking at the iguanas these are the green iguanas that normally inhabit these uh, this tropical region but of course um, uh, due to the urban development of the area most of the habitat was lost but within this particular park in other parks in the downtown area of Guayaquil you see very well the iguanas the green iguanas if if shopping is 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 the name of the game in this one no, do know that because of the heavy commerce level that the city of Guayaquil has shopping it's quite rewarding in uh, in the city all brands and in 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 great things are found in here not that your clients are going to come to Guayaquil just for the shopping but shopping can be a very good um add on if you will an activity uh, uh, an entertainment type of activity that will make them quite at ease in the uh, in the city and will allow them to appreciate the city from a different uh, perspective when it comes to business remember the city is the most important port in Ecuador and one of the most important ports in the whole region of South America so therefore there's a lot of business going on if ever, if if your clients are planning business meetings and things like that Guayaquil is definitely a good platform a good venue to carry all of that when it comes to nightlife in and events too much we probably can say about the city. There is entertainment, nightlife activity, events happening all year round. Every corner of this city has a little bit going has a little bit of everything going on. So you will never run short of nightlife programs and different events. When it comes to sports, many sports are happening in uh, in the area. Two very well represented uh, teams in international standards are, are from the area. One of them is Emelec, the other one is Barcelona, and, uh, and, and they are both well respected in the, um, in the region of South America, and there are plenty of those sports uh, events happening in, uh, in the city. So if your clients ever want, are interested into that and would like to attend one of these games, this is a city together with the city of Quito that will definitely have uh, great sports events and they will make them quite... Um, uh, they will make your clients quite happy to see all of that. When it comes to congresses and conventions, another set of businesses, another line of businesses, do know that many venues and special uh, locations have been developed 
and built specifically for the purpose. They're very well uh, uh, equipped in, uh, in, in, in many of these events, congresses, again, conventions, big events can happen at a, at a, at a high level in, uh, in the city. All right, so that's a little bit of the geography, and let's go back to what we were saying before. We talked about the riverfront, the downtown area. You can see the location where the airport is found and how close it is, in fact, to the uh, to the city. The big estuary up, up there, and of course the Wyas River. And do know that there are many other uh, satellite cities: San Borondon, Duran, and in in the Santai uh, uh, Santai Island can be seen in that area. The yellow square that you see on the right of the picture is the San Borondon where you find the historical park, um, a, a recreation, if you will, of how the late colonial days of the city, how the early republican days of the city were, were, were made, and we'll see that in just a minute. Duran to the opposite end of the river is interesting because it's what receives all the products from roads that come eventually from the highlands, and from here they'll get distributed or, or transported by river to the city of Guayaquil itself. So again, there's a lot of commerce happening, and they and their bridges, their uh, their river boats that take all of this. But Duran is a very important city and region of uh, of the area. Also, in that same lo location is where the end of the uh, railway happens. So, uh, clients who are taking the famous Tren Crucero from the highlands down into Guayaquil will come to the Duran station, you can see where that is, and will get to go by bridge over to the other side of the river in order to reach the city. And then finally, Santai Island, this new development that is all to the right, uh, it's, it's a new uh, location, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, you'll see uh, some pictures. Now, San Borondon is called the trendy zone. San Borondon is a, it, it's modern, it's residential. Some businesses are, of course, in the area, but it's all related to the water, and some of the river uh, comes into the, uh, the, the area. It will resemble um, many uh, places in Florida. Uh, interesting homes are found in this area, but it's definitely a trendy zone for development. And the modern fusion restaurants that you find in, in Guayaquil are definitely developing right in here. We go across and the historical historical park of Guayaquil is there. Wildlife zone is also uh, there. Is, is where you find some of the remnants of the uh, of the bird life of uh, of Guayaquil and the in its tropical uh, makeup, but it is here where you find the historical historical park. This recreation of the late colonial early republican days of the city that is in there. And there are some restaurants, there are some uh, artisans and in, in, in handcrafts shops that is good for walking and and it's great to be around. You can easily spend half a day just strolling in the area and getting to know. Uh, the locals and everything. Plaza Lagos is a new development also on this side of the uh, of the river. Um, it's a commercial meeting point. There are shops, more modern of course, but they can be seen right in, in that location. And then as we were saying, the Duran station, this is the very end of the uh, of the Tren Crucero, of the railway, as it comes down uh, to the to the coast all the way from the from the highlands and this is where the the train will stop and leave its visitors and some cargo still being carried around Santa Island this is a Google image picture from uh, from from space from satellite you can see the difference between the developed area to the left all the homes and streets and, and avenues and the greenery of the Santa Island fantastic for exploring and getting to know more of the natural components of uh, of that area, and it's easily arranged because you just take a little uh, river trip or go across the uh, the bridge, and you reach Santa Island. Probably a good two hours or two three hours of walking are is what you need in that area, but it will bring you back to the uh, to the. Uh, uh, to, to the natural makeup of how the tropics were at some point in this place. When it comes to understanding the city and getting to know the city, I would recommend that seeing it by the uh, different uh, double-decker deck, buses is um, it, it, it's quite a sight. Of course, the weather, remember, is, is great year-round, so there's nothing to worry about in terms of getting cold, but just uh, know that it can get uh, quite sunny and quite warm, but um, it's definitely worth it to get onto the um, double-decker buses. That's a very interesting way of getting to see the city. If you like to see the city from the river and, of course, experience more of the uh, aquatic component, uh, seeing it from the um, from a boat can be a, a, a rewarding way. This is one of the boats that cruises along the Wyas River and will give you fantastic views of the, um, of the city. 
when it comes to infrastructure of uh, of the city, there the, the the city is very well ready and very well equipped for uh, for all of this. Do keep in mind that because of the origin of the city of Guayaquil, Guayaquil is a modern uh, business city. Therefore, unlike cities like Cuenca or Quito, who, who which have uh, a bit more of the boutique style hotels and more traditional, Guayaquil is more on the modern business style of, uh, of, of accommodations, more for the um, business component and, and, and very uh, little for the leisure. But, ne but do know that there are plenty of rooms available for everybody. Over 150 sites for accommodation are found in, uh, in the city. When it comes to food, do know that because we are at sea level, the, in, the incoming seafood of, uh, of our coastline um, fisheries are very good. The gastronomy of the city of Guayaquil is fantastic. Remember that culture is also set by the type of food we eat. And if you remember what we said about Quito with one type of food in the, in the highlands, in the coast is a different type of food. And particularly preparation, the seasoning that is done is definitely um, uh, quite a shock, quite a difference from the highlands. So make sure your clients enjoy the food of, um, of the city. Now, let me get, go back for a while to air transportation because it's very important for you to know that the airport is right you know, within the city, very easy uh, to reach, uh, very well connected with the world and very well connected, of course, to the rest of the country. So do know that the airport is very well equipped and can definitely help you in, uh, in any uh, way of connecting the, the cities or connecting it with other countries in the region of South America. Now that your clients will get onto the local transportation, but this is the transportation system that has been very well recognized by the um, by United Nations Development Program because it has definitely helped the city. Remember, there are about 3 million people who live in the city and the surrounding satellite cities who need transportation. So because of that, the, the planning of, of the city has been very, very good, and thus it has been recognized. So transportation is definitely good. Now, we always, we always get questions about, you know, where to find more details of those facilities and hotels and transportation and cruises that happen within the, uh, the city of Guayaquil. In other words, how to start putting a program together, how to start finding all these components for, uh, for Ecuador, and particularly the city of Guayaquil. Remember that in our web uh, page of all you need is Ecuador.travel, you do find the directory. The directory is very important. Remember that when you see the banner, just go straight to the um, uh, little tab that you see in here, and the directory will display all the different options that it's, are included. And then tour operators are there, travel agents are there. Um, transportation, cruises, food, all of that can be seen, and that is how you connect to the rest of the country, to the, to the elements or the different components that you are likely to put on, uh, on, the, on your program. Now remember, because of its location, Guayaquil also has access to different beaches. Now that the beaches are in Guayaquil, keep that in mind, you need to go from the city to where the beaches are. And the famous or most famous of all is the Salinas Beach, which is in the province next door to the city of Guayaquil. It takes about two hours uh, to reach it, perhaps a little less than that, an hour and a half, no more than that. Um, but then also other options are there, like if you want to see the cocoa bean plantations, the, 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 the birthplace of, of, of lowland chocolate, if you will, bananas, uh, mangroves, the gulf itself of the, of, the, of the Guayaquil region, more on the uh, landscape and scenery, that can be also added into the program. These are ideas that will make your program diverse. Now here's a view of Salinas, a great location for relaxing after a trip in uh, in Ecuador. It's right by the by the beach, hotels and in 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 um, in in places to stay are found right by the uh, right by the water. Uh, Montañita, it's also reachable. That's a good place for uh, surfing. Very well regarded in the in the region of South America. Continue north, and you'll end up into the Machalilla National Park, one of the easiest places for whale watching in somewhat called the. Um, Galapagos of the coast of Ecuador because the, some of the wildlife resembles the wildlife that you'll see in the Galapagos Islands including albatrosses, blue-footed boobies, pelicans and even sea lions. Good snorkeling and good scuba diving by the way also here in case your clients for, for some reason are not doing the Galapagos on this trip or probably they've done it already and they want to include a little bit of natural components, Machalija National Park is a great option for that. As we were saying, the cocoa bean plantations, the cacao are right in there. This is the birthplace of the 
best cocoa beans and definitely the best um, chocolate you'll ever have in your life. Uh, banana farms are there and you can see the, how, uh, how bananas are produced. Remember that Ecuador is the largest producer and exporter of bananas at the moment in the, in the world and recently, not too long ago, it went over the exportation of shrimps. At some point, shrimp was the second uh, product of exportation of the country. Bananas are now jumping into the second slot right in there. For the uh, for reserves and, and ecological places um, that preserve the uh, the wildlife in the natural habitat, there's Mangladesh Churute Reserve. Incredible mangroves and bird life are found in here, and in, in, in some of the best bird watching in the coast I've seen right at this location. The Gulf of Guayaquil, remember, is the largest estuary of the Pacific, the second largest riverbed in the the, the second uh, not largest, the second most productive. Uh, riverbed of the of the whole planet, and you can see there how the Wyas River and its tributaries and eventually open up and cut off and end up into the uh, Pacific Ocean. So all of that area is full of uh, of resources. All right, so let's put the uh, the trip together, and you can see that Guayaquil in in three or more days can definitely have interesting components. In one day, for example, you can do the Malecon, Las Peñas uh, neighborhood all the way and walk all the way to the um, to the uh, to, to the Santana uh, Hill, you can do the Morgan boat along the uh, the river. Uh, you can see some of the museums in that area, and just stroll and easily get to know the locals. That happens in day one, for example. Day two can give you more of the downtown area. Maybe go to the to the uh, Seminario Park and see the uh, the iguanas. Do the estero, the modern area for the estuary, um, and of course continue within. The, uh, the, the, the other museums that can be seen in downtown. That can happen in day two. Um, day three, well, maybe it's, it's the day for exploring the outskirts of the city and go to the San Borondon, the trendy uh, place across the river, maybe Santai Island for a good walk in the uh, estuary and original vegetation of the tropics, maybe Cerro Blanco for some good bird watching in, um, in interesting habitats of, uh, of the different vegetation and of course the sur surrounding area. All of that can be done in three days but of course it's up to you how much you want to do in the um, in this incredible uh, city. Uh, remember the locations of where these are. Uh, Malecon is right by the water. The Las Peñas uh, older district it's, uh, it's over the Santa Ana uh, hill. The Estero is the more modern towards the north northwest or rather North northwest of uh, of the city, uh, downtown is where the 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 administration buildings, the Iguana Park is located, and definitely going out on the different days of uh, of of, the, of your program. Now let's go back to what makes um, Guayaquil e an easy spot. Remember that you can easily connect from the city to the Galapagos Islands. Most flies, in fact originate from here and go all the way to the Galapagos. Some do from do come from Quito straight to the islands, but others do come from Quito, stop over in Guayaquil for about 30 minutes and continue their way all the way to the Galapagos Islands. So remember Guayaquil is the place to connect. If you want to go to Cuenca, you can either drive or you can fly. Uh, uh, only takes about 25 30 minutes and you'll fly over the Andes and into the beautiful city of Cuenca and we'll have a webinar um, on December 17th on the uh, on the beautiful city of Cuenca so make sure you join us for uh, for that one then if you want to go to Quito of course you can do it in reverse you can board the train in the at the Duran station and make your way all the way up into the highlands uh, and then of course from the highlands from the city of Quito or other southern locations you can reach the Amazon of Ecuador. As you can see, Guayaquil is another strategic location that allows you to have access to um, to the rest of the beauty of uh, of Ecuador. When you want to know prices and everything, do know that the country of Ecuador is affordable. You have uh, price ranges for all kinds of things and do know that uh, if you want to go on a double-decker bus for a tour of the city, it'll cost you six dollars per person, uh, seven dollars for the local boat that takes you along the river, uh, twenty-five dollars in sharing basis, and then of course with other operators you can go from fifty dollars a person to two hundred dollars a person on private basis depending on the type of transportation 
and of course depending what you want to include but as you can see you can do a lot within a um, few days available that your clients may have in the region but again you pack up a lot of beautiful um, experiences all right so let's wrap up the ideas of Guayaquil it's pleasant warm climate all year round which again, when it's cold up north or way, way south, it's definitely good to come all the way to Ecuador and of course enjoy the pleasant weather here in Guayaquil. Is the city located at sea level? Well, four meters above sea level, very close to the, uh, to the ocean. Great facilities, great activities, great infrastructure. Um, if you have clients who probably have issues with high altitude uh, sickness, uh, well, maybe Guayaquil is their better option, if you will, to know Ecuador and of course to travel here to from the Galapagos Islands. It's close to great natural areas and important beaches, of course, in the Pacific Ocean. Keep that in mind. So uh, again, Guayaquil is not just a city with an airport, it's a city that can give you a lot of access to other locations. Uh, it gives you great business and shopping opportunities. Keep that in mind. You, this is the place where business happens. It's the most important economic port of the uh, of the country, and it's very well connected with other Ecuador's highlights, including airline transportation. If you're planning a trip for your clients, for example, in the neighboring countries, and you want to come into Ecuador or depart from Ecuador, do know that Guayaquil has that international airport, extremely well connected. Uh, keep in mind that we will have a new uh, webinar that will be the one on Cuenca, beautiful city up in the highlands, also World Heritage uh, property since 1999 and uh, we'll have this one starting December 16th and 17th in five languages. The English one will be on the 17th, so make sure you join us on uh, on that one. And remember that on our website, all you need is Ecuador.travel. It's where you find the recordings of all these different webinars for future reference. Keep that in mind as we, um, as we develop more and more programs and add them to as value for you on the website. So um, some questions have been uh, given to us. They'll be um, broadcasted l later. They'll be collected over the, um, the, the, the email platform because we can keep uh, a record of all of those uh, questions. All of them, of course, are very, very important for you. And, there's, if, and if there's anything, of course, you can always access through our website, all you need is Ecuador.travel, the um, information about these uh, places. There, drop us a line. Let us know what you, uh, what, what you think of these uh, webinars. Let us know also, of course, what you need from our end. Anything that you like to expand a little more, uh, bro you know, improve your knowledge, expand your knowledge, let us know. We'll be more than happy to develop any new platform, platforms for that. For me, Francisco Duz de Bez, it's been a pleasure to uh, host this English webinar on the amazing city of uh, Guayaquil. And with that same energy and passion, I would like to invite you to join us on December 17th for the next webinar. This will be on the beautiful city of Cuenca. You all have a good day today. Enjoy the um, the, uh, the, the, the last days of, uh, of our fantastic 2014. All the best for 2015 and uh, let us know anything we can do for you. Thank you very much. You have a good one.